Hello. In this video, we will learn how Java allows selective or conditional execution of statements. The programs we have written till now have executed sequentially, means statements were executed from top to bottom. However, many times it is required that depending upon some condition, some steps need to be executed or may be skipped to. Like for example, if it is raining today, I'll take my umbrella, otherwise I'll leave it at home. A selection or decision-making statement means the execution of statements depend upon some condition. If a condition is true, the execution moves to one set of statements and if it is false, it branches to another one. Java supports following selection statements if, if else, if else if ladder and switch. Let's start by learning the if statement. The syntax for if statement is as shown. If statement has a test condition which evaluates to true or false. If it evaluates to true, block of statements that follow it are executed. If it is a single statement, you can just write the statement directly. If it has multiple statements or also called compound statements, then you need to enclose it in parenthesis. If it is evaluated to false, then the control jumps to the statement after the block. Let's see this with an example. Here if amount is greater than 100, then the discount is 10%. Otherwise, no discount is offered. Now let's look at if else statement. The syntax is as shown. Here you have two set of statements, one to be executed if expression is true and second statement to be executed if expression evaluates to false. For example, a program to check which of the two numbers are smaller. Here you will write the expression and in true print the first number and if false print the second number. Now what if you have multiple options to choose from, not just two, then Java allows you to construct if else if ladder. If you see the syntax, here if statements are executed from top to down. If we see this in an example here, we are assigning grades based upon marks. Moment and if condition is true, all other if statements are bypassed and if none of those if statement is true, then the last else is executed. Key thing to remember when writing multiple if else is to understand which else the if belongs to. Here try to use proper indentation and curly braces to bring in the clarity. Now let's look at some more examples. First is find if a number is leap year. Now the logic for it is that if a year is divisible by 400 then it is a leap year else if year is divisible by 100, then it is not a leap year. Else, if year is divisible by 4, then it is a leap year. And in all other cases, it's not a leap year. So we will first write a if statement. We will use the modulus operator to divide by 400 and see if there is any remainder. If the year is divisible by 400, then it is a leap year. Else, if the year is divisible by 100, then it is not a leap year. Else, if the year is divisible by 4, then it is a leap year. And in all other cases, it is not a leap year. This completes our program. Let's take another example. Here we will write a program to calculate the commission of salesmen depending upon these three conditions. Here we will create an if-else if construct where in first if we will check for the first condition, then we will check for the middle condition and finally we will check for the last condition. Now the drawback of if else if is that when number of alternatives increase, the complexity of the code increases and logic is not visible straightforward. That's where switch statement comes in. It is multi-way branch select statement. The syntax for switch statement is as shown. Here the switch condition or expression has to be either integer or char primitive data types. You cannot specify a range over here like if and it has to be an exact match. Then it has multiple case literals against which 
the value of switch expression is compared. If a match is found, then that case section is executed. If no match is found, then the default value is executed. Here default is optional. Also break statement is necessary to terminate the sequence. If break is not given, then it will fall through the next case and execute the next statements in sequence and not exit the switch block. Let's see this with an example program where we need to determine if given character is vowel or not using switch. Here key thing to note is that char is enclosed in single quotes while all other integer values can be written directly. Since for all vowels we need to print the same message, we can let them fall through and give one single print statement. Remember to put a break after that. All others are by default not a vowel, so we will put in a default statement. Another kind of problem that you can expect is conversion from if-else to switch or to ternary operator. For example, convert the following to ternary operator. If you remember the ternary operator, it has a condition then question mark and then true condition colon followed by false condition. So to convert, we will put in the condition first followed by the if condition which is true and then the false condition. Do practice some more programs on if and switch before you move to the next topic. For more videos, questions and programs to practice, you can visit my website.